Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Knapp & Vogt BX1062-US26D. Uh, the 2060 finish uh, is a reference to the small amount of trim that you'd see when the uh, lock shroud or the bezel is installed, and then of course the cylinder face. It's not true satin chrome, but it's of course very complimentary. This is available in the uh, in two finishes, chrome and brass. It is available in keyed alike or keyed differently. So if you have your finish, 2060, and you add A to the end, that's keyed alike. Uh, in the absence of adding that A, it would be keyed differently is how these would, uh, would, would be supplied. So this is satin chrome and in, uh, in brass as well. So this is a keyed lock for a pocket door residential application, uh, even commercial, I suppose. Uh, there is a link below this video to a document um, called Instructions. And those are very handy, and we'll go over them now. And the application and installation instructions are very straightforward. They're basically giving you, in step one, the one crucial dimension, and that is three-quarter inch from the edge of the door to the center line of where the hole will be drilled. They give you a 36 inch reference from the floor, but of course that's based on your exact needs. 36 is very common for residential uh, applications. Uh, step one specifically says they want an eighth of an inch hole drilled from the back side of the door. That's a pilot hole. Um, I certainly do not disagree with that at all. Uh, I would be having drilled countless holes with hole saws. I would be more tempted to, uh, if I was going to drill a, a, uh, a pilot hole, I might use a smaller drill bit. The reasoning is, is when you get to step two, they want a one inch hole saw. Um, and a hole saw might not be the right or best tool for this, but it's very typical and, and generic. Uh, you might want to use a Forstner bit uh, in the, in, in the, interest of making that exterior hole as clean as possible. Uh, you might just want to use a spade bit as well, but the point of the matter is you want the initial contact of the, of the saw to be very clean on the face of the door. You have a small amount of margin when this is pressured fit into the hole. Okay, a very small amount of margin, so you're going to want a real nice clean hole. If I was going to do a pilot hole, I'd probably go with a sixteenth of an inch, real careful, real straight. Uh, come to the front side of the door, get that one inch hole all the way through the door. Then at that point, you are moving to, and that's at three quarter inch from the heel edge of the door to the center line. At that point, you're moving to step three, where you're going to insert what is called the lock shroud or bezel, sometimes it's uh, called, uh, on the what would be the keyed side. Then from the back side of the door, you're going to present the key cylinder or the, or the lock body itself. This would be the top when it's in the unlocked position. And they're going to mate together through the door just like that. Now the instructions uh, call out the fact that this is going to be compatible with doors from 3 quarter inch to inch and 3 quarter thick doors. So that's incredibly handy. Uh, and I'll give you some dimensions of this material next. Uh, step 4 shows the introduction of the lock body. They show it the opposite way where it's installed this way. That would mean, of course, your key would be going with the teeth down, which is a bit opposite the way that most people are accounted or accustomed to it. Pardon me. Uh, regardless, you can install it either way. I don't see a, a reason for it to be one way or the other. Uh, talking about this lock body, a rotating of the key is what forces the tailpiece to activate up and down. That is obviously going to put you in the locked position. There is three screws and a strike plate. This strike plate will mount to the face, the inside uh, edge of the frame, and act as a strike plate so that when the lock is presented to it, it will be hitting metal rather than wood. Three screws, two for here. The larger one will hold this onto the frame. Now, let's give you some dimensions. And obviously remove that key in both locked and unlocked positions. Here we go. Overall of the body, overall, 
about an, about an inch and 11 sixteenths. Width of the back, inch and a sixteenth or so. Overall height, two and a sixteenth. From the back side of the door, the total projection of this is going to be inch and a half. So if you have an inch and three quarter door, obviously this will not be flush with the face, but when you insert the key, and you're really using it as a handle, uh, the key will, the head of the key will project out far enough to allow you to rotate it. Okay, just barely as you can see, but that's how it's intended to work. And of course your installation will look more like that. Or possibly like that. Okay. Uh, the instructions are included with the package when you get them. Uh, they are linked down below here for pre or post sale uh, purchase uh, reference. The name Knapp and Vote is synonymous with uh, what I know them mostly for, uh, and I think most people do as well, are standards, brackets, pilaster strips, and clips. Shelving organization. They're the name synonymous with that sort of material. They have a, uh, there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up the full line catalog. Now that's a handy reference because uh, looking at it you might say, you might realize, oh I didn't realize, you'll realize that Nap Invoke or K and V makes material that uh, was previously unknown to you possibly. What also is of note from that manufacturer's page is the link to their sliding door catalog. That is a relatively new line of hardware for them and what they are providing and of course this piece of accessory hardware is part and parcel with that sort of product line, uh, their, their uh, sliding door hardware catalog. They get into all of the track, the hangers, all of the accessory hardware for pocket, bifold, bypass sorts of doors. In all of my years of reviewing sliding door hardware from uh, countless manufacturers, their catalog stands alone as the most organized catalog that I've ever reviewed. Once you know your application, you have to then determine the weight of the doors, and then you go immediately to that section and you review all of the possibilities. It's that simple and straightforward. So I really enjoy that catalog uh, a, great, uh, a great deal. Um, again, you can get these in key to like or key differently. That's important because you might have more than one pocket door in your home, you might have two or maybe three, you don't want to carry around three door, uh, three different keys, or you might need to make one key different, keep the kids out of the closet sort of thing, and then the others can be key to like, whatever the situation is. Add the A to the end of the part number and you are uh, getting them key to like. If you have any questions on the Nap and Vote BX1062 and a 2060 uh, finish, or any other Nap and Vote product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.